What's going on, Bulls Nation? Welcome into the CHGO Bulls Podcast presented to you by PointsBet. Don't forget that promo code CHGO when signing up to live your bet life. Pack a Big Dave coming to you from our West Loop Studios here downtown Chicago. Mm-hmm. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. Big Dave is at Bow, BAWL Sports. Just singing some Michael McDonald's. That's what I do, man. Um, Yo, are we on the screen? Uh, it's still just it's still just the, the title <laughs> sequence. Oh, uh, hey. hey. Hey, Joey. Hey, it's going. Welcome to the show. <laughs> we were on preview mode. We were on preview mode. Starts multitasking. As soon as he came on the show, he immediately started doing something else. Already off the rails. Already good. Shut it down. I think we should shut it down. Yeah, let's get out of here. Let's All right, let's you guys ready to go? I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Um, Joey, are we on the, the screen? The, <laughs> <laughs> the Bulls are off today. Uh, Billy Donovan gave his players the, play, uh, their, the day off from practice. Yes. So we decided to give the GOAT the day off. Yes. If they're off. He gets a day off too. They're off, so you're off. rocking with us today. Yes. Um, so that means we we're gonna do prove it, Pat. Today okay. we're gonna push that to tomorrow, so Will doesn't miss it. Yes. So today, instead, what we decided to do was to go down the list of our favorite moments from or favorite things about this four game preseason stint we just watched from the Bulls. So we'll do that coming up in a little bit. But first, we had to react to the big news of the NBA over the last 24 hours or so, which is that Draymond Green, as of tomorrow will be rejoined with his Warriors teammates. He was fined by the team, but will not face a suspension. Joey, do we have that tweet from Kendra Andrews? Thank you. Draymond Green says he will rejoin the team Thursday. He has been fined but not suspended. Kerr says he will play in the team's final preseason game this Friday and will be available on opening night. Uh, Initial reaction to this, Dave? Uh, My first one was, oh, man, what? He's not getting suspended? That was the first reaction I had. Yeah. But then I started just thinking back uh, to other moments like this in basketball history. And, yeah, then I was like, okay, I understood it, and I got it. Because I immediately felt back to – and I was like, the coach who did it went through this and didn't – nothing happened to the person who did that to him. Even though it was the greatest player to ever play in the history of the game, and we understand that. Mm-hmm. But still, you know – fine, kicked out of practice kind of disciplinary action, which is I think this was going to be what was going to happen to him even if this didn't get out. I think he was just going to be fined and they were going to say, you know, both the guys worked it out, it's okay now. But I think what makes it worse for people is they have something visual to put to it. So they're like, kick this dude out, you know, for right. as many games as possible. Would, would we have had that kind of reaction if video footage leaked of MJ punching Steve Kerr in the face or – I, you know, insert other example. I would have said, you know what? If they suspend them, I understand. That's that's what I said. But then if they – when they didn't, I'd be like, okay, yeah, they find it. They worked it out. Let's move on, guys. We're trying to win championships and focus up. I guarantee you that's probably what I would have said. And that's kind of what I say here uh, as well. They looked at it. Obviously, they had the best view of what was going down, and they know what took place after it was over as well between the two parties. Right. So I, I'm just going to go ahead and trust, you know – what they feel is the right thing. And Jordan Poole is okay with it also. I mean, what what are we supposed to do? Hey, well, I mean, I think Jordan Poole is you know, like, it. it's certainly commendable the way that he's handled it because yeah. he well, certainly has it, been, uh, you know, very facing forward to say, well, let's put this behind us. But yeah. I can't imagine that deep down Jordan Poole is actually already cool with Draymond again. Yeah, you gotta no, I agree with that. Assume that there's at least some lingering resentment there. No, oh, yeah, um, I agree. And and this was, as you said, because the video got leaked, and it, it does it does look so violent in nature that maybe it's surprising to some people that there was no suspension attached to this fine. I I I would not have been surprised if they gave him a one or two game suspension. And honestly, I I think it would have been warranted. Yeah. And again, it's not like the the scenarios are completely comparable, but the Bulls suspended Bobby Portis for eight games. They did. Eight they did. games. They did. And, and the reason why I think so, Matt, is he broke his face. <laughs> I think that's why. That's just my my interpretation. I think that's why. Um, but again, people involved with it, even even though we saw it, people involved with these kind of situations have a better grasp on what's going on in that situation. Yeah. And that's why I just have to kind of trust it. Um, I know what we saw, and it looked terrible and horrible like that. But if they're like, well, he's going to be fined, and we're going to work it out that way, they were there. You know, like, I, it's hard for me to go against that. I don't have to agree with it. I do think he should have been suspended, like, yeah. maybe a game or two. 
but I get it. You know what I mean? And, I, and I, I'm accepting of it because they're accepting of it. Uh, in the comments, McBaconator saying oh, any other boy. any other workplace, and he's fired on the spot. Well, By yeah. and large, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we tend to let professional athletes get away with a little bit more. Yeah. And, you know, that's the way it is. That doesn't mean it's right. No. But it's the reality. It's a thing. Um, it's also like, I don't know, people are talking a lot about him like being charged criminally. I'm like, you know, it's a different thing if he walked up to a random guy on the street and punched him like this. They have yeah. a relationship. Pool isn't, I mean, the criminal charges will be brought on by the state. But it's like, if there's a history between them, it's not like they're two strangers. So it's not like Pool yeah. is necessarily looking at it and that's his way of, you know, Making things right, necessarily. Right. Okay. Uh, I mean, but I'll, you know, we were just watching Sports Center here at the office before coming on the show, and they were talking about the Devontae Adams thing from the Raiders game. Yeah. And it's like, you know, he shoves that guy who's just trying to do his job, whatever, and it's like, that guy filed a police report against Devontae Adams. That, to me, looked way less egregious than if Jordan Poole filed a police report on Draymond. I'd be like, you know what? Yeah. yeah. I think that's yeah. valid. Yeah. If he wanted to file a police report for that, he was uh, he was assaulted. He, he got assaulted. punched in the face. He got punched in the first. And that's what it boils punched. down to. It's this yeah. guy, the camera guy, who doesn't know Devonte Adams, who has no reason to say, I'm not going to press charges against you, yeah. is much more likely to go after him than Jordan Poole, who's you know teammate of Draymond. They have right. some positive history together. Yeah. Uh, I'm Maybe. a spooky kitty in the comments. <laughs> okay. Maybe it's just, I wonder if they changed their YouTube name with the seasons. Maybe. Or in my head, they're just going with that all the time. Okay. Uh, said, nah, bro, that was assault. <laughs> That's assault, brother. <laughs> That's assault, man. Uh, Carlos, what's CHGO's HR policy on punching other people? Zero tolerance. Yeah. We'll roll with that. Um, so I also saw this tweet uh, from Mark Stein quoting Steve Kerr and some of Steve Kerr's comments about welcoming Draymond back. Okay. Joey, let's take a look at that because I thought this was interesting from Steve Kerr who said, Draymond and I have been together for eight years. Mm -hmm. We've had plenty of run-ins, but I trust him. Mm -hmm. He broke our trust with this incident, mm -hmm. but I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt because I think he's earned that, mm -hmm. and I think our team feels the same way. At first, I saw this from Steve Kerr, and I was like, it just seems like you're letting him off easy mm -hmm. with, with a comment like that. Mm -hmm. But maybe there is something to this, like... In all of these years that we've dealt with, like, crazy Uncle Draymond, who's a little, little crazy, <laughs> this is the first big problem we've had. Yeah, and, and because it's the first big problem, we're going to be lenient this time. Yeah. What the key phrase for me with that was, we've had run-ins like this in the past. Basically, we dealt with this before. This ain't new. This ain't foreign to but us. But does that mean, like, yeah, we've dealt with Draymond punching his teammates in the face before? I don't and we just know. didn't let it leak those times? No, I don't think it's that because that when he said his trust was broken. Yeah. So I don't think it ever got to that point. But run ins, you know, means we, we know who he is. We right. know how we deal with him. We've seen Draymond do that to Steve Kerr on the sideline. Okay. We've seen him yelling at the coach then, man. Him being that kind of dude is just who Draymond Green is. But Kerr is right. Like, when you do something like that, you kind of cross the line. Um, he said he'd been going through something. As they say, hurt people hurt people. But he says he's been going through some things, and maybe he took it off, took it out a little bit on him. And I think that might be accurate because of the reaction in general to that, of him just running up on him, you know, in his chest, and then just taking everything out on him. Maybe he was. But like Steve Kerr said, the trust was broken with him. But he built up some cachet over these years because I'm sure if in those run-ins, Matt, that have occurred, and I'm sure they will occur during games, as I just said, if they could come out at halftime and still go out there and play basketball and run, and obviously they bury the hatchet and talk it through and right. get it out, so they know it and they and they understand that. So again, I'm trusting Steve Kerr and his organization on this, and I think everybody should too. Because they, they are the ones closest to this. We are literally on the outside looking in right. on this, man. We don't know what happened after it was over. I'm talking about as far as apologies or what was said or how it was brought together and how that was conveyed to Jordan Poole. I don't know. But I'm going to trust Steve Kerr because Steve, we know who Steve Kerr is, right? Yeah. We know what kind of person that Steve Kerr is. Yeah. So I'm going to put my trust there. Uh, Damon in the comments bringing up uh, something I also saw earlier today, that Draymond's mom did an interview trying to defend – her son, yeah, uh, mom, as if he see? was in the right for what he did. Demond said he thinks that's great. I mean, it's your mom. Clearly, bro. It's your, mom. your mom will <laughs> Yo. stick up for you. Yeah, pretty much for whatever you've done. Exactly. Your mom is your mom. Your you know, bro. your parents 
they're they're the, you know hopefully the type of people who will always be in your corner no matter what back, you know i think she's wrong in her assessment of well it was jordan Poole's fault he started it, he pushed him it was like yeah but your son got up in his business <laughs> um but you know your, your thoughts there about steve kerr and and this long history that they have and yeah. Maybe the Warriors being a team that everything they've been through with this core of Kerr, Steph, Clay, Draymond, even Iguodala, yeah. who like left briefly but now is back. Yeah. Those guys have been through so much, and they have what it takes as the core unit of leaders of this organization yeah. to get through and past something like this. Yes. Um, yes. And, and it kind of, in, in certain ways, can remind you of a different team, a different dynasty that Steve was a part of, and that's yeah. the 90s Bulls. Correct. Where were it not for... The leadership of people like Phil Jackson and Michael Jordan, maybe they can't handle Scotty being a little sourpuss about certain things, can yeah. contract this, trade a man that, and certainly couldn't handle Dennis. Yes. Like the Spurs no tried and were like, we give up. We're we don't done. know how to handle this guy. Right, exactly. It takes a certain amount of collective leadership, not just individual leadership, collective leadership to handle somebody as as crazy as a Dennis or a Draymond. And I, maybe that's kind of what Steve is talking about here. Yeah, it, that's very well said. And like you said, Steve Kerr's been through this. like, And that's why he's the perfect person to trust in this kind of situation. Because I'm sure he went through – I'm probably he went through worse. <laughs> Whatever he's going with through Draymond, I guarantee you it was worse what he was going through then. Because then there were no cameras. You know what I mean? There was no threat of this getting out. That was none of that stuff was going to happen. We were just going to have to deal with it and accept what was coming out of that building. You know what I mean? It's different now. You know what I mean? Now we got spies in. Now you got guys selling uh, the tapes to TMZ. You know, it's a whole different ball game. But mm -hmm. but Steve Kerr has played both of those ball games, and so I, that's again that's why I have the trust and the kind of person that just he is. You know, he's always that stand up dude that's honest and tells the truth. But he's always being def he will always defend his players like that. But when they do something wrong and messed up, he calls them out about it. Right. Tell them, like, yo, this was wrong. This was messed up. I'm going to trust how they handle it. If Jordan Poole had a problem with it, I think I probably would have a bigger problem with it because he's the person that actually took the punch in this. Right. And if he's like, no, that's some bull. I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? He should be, I don't want him around anymore. It's like with Bobby Portis. You could tell he had all kinds of problems with Nico after that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It was like, okay, look, I don't want to do this no more. We riding with Bobby. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, we with Bobby on this damn. Fine. We with you, Bobby, man. He got to go. You know what I'm saying? Get Although this dude it didn't off the team. prevent them from when Bobby came back from that suspension, him and Nico as individuals playing very well it and completely ruining the Bulls' tank. It did. Thanks again for that, guys. It didn't. They went on that eight game winning streak. I remember oh that God, you very, remember that? very well. I remember that very well. Chris Dunn was out of his mind. It's the worst week and a half of my life. Yeah, man. Nico was playing like we had been begging him to play for about four like, years. Oh, yeah. Good thing we went from you yeah. know a 20-win team to a 27-win team just yeah. in the nick of time. I, I definitely remember that very well. But it was time for Nico to go uh, in that situation. It was time for him to get out of there, man. But, yeah, I'm glad it's a uh, – I, I, I can't – because Draymond, well, he's coming to practice tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody's going to be asking questions. <laughs> Everything's going to be there. There will be more to this story. Because I guarantee you, to me, we'll be talking. And to Draymond's credit, he doesn't run from these kind of things. To yeah. his credit, I'll give him See, that. But so that's the interesting part of this. Um, and th and then we can move on. But mm -hmm. Draymond has his own show, mm -hmm. right? And, and and not just the he's already doing you know NBA on TNT content when yeah. he's not playing because that's clearly his career is going to take off the day he retires. Mm -hmm. But he also has the Draymond Green show. Yeah. A lot of people were wondering. Is he about to drop an episode of the pod explaining his side of what happened? Wow. New and, he, and he hasn't yet. Yeah. And I think a lot of people have been saying to Draymond, just don't. Yeah. Like, I'm sure you would love to get on the mics and give your side of this story. And maybe part of that even is issuing an apology. But I, I, I'm guessing that people have been advising in Draymond's ear, talking more about this on your show would only make it worse because we're trying to move past this and you would be, you know, giving more air to the fire, essentially. Yeah. I am shocked knowing how much Draymond loves to talk yeah. and knowing how much he cares about this hashtag new media that he's building with his show. I am shocked that he has not come out and talked about it. I am too. Uh, I think that probably came from the team as well, but I think it's too early for him to come out and say something. 
because nobody's going to really be on his side. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right well, now, his mom. he's got something to say. Well, outside <laughs> his mom. Um, I think time has to go by on this. This is something, honestly, Matt, that I would discuss years later. I would break this down years later on whatever podcast or something like that. Like, this is something for the documentary right. that, that you kind of put there where it kind of has gone its course. You right. know? At least that's how I think. You know what I mean? If he decides to speak earlier about it, that's his opinion. But for me, I, you just wouldn't get all that out of me until I'm out of the NBA. It's behind us. We've won all the championships. We've done everything. And then, okay, statute of limitations time. You know what I mean? Now we can have this discussion. Now we can talk about it. I I see uh, Colin says that he has to come clean. He has a, your favorite, Matt, he has a Miritich jersey. Well, that's a big job. Big waste of money. <laughs> Funny that we were just talking about how much. We were just, just talking about jerseys. jerseys at the office earlier today and how yes. I think they're dumb. Yes, he was. <laughs> he called it get a t-shirt, jersey. get a jersey. Don't combine the two. Oh, uh, never do that. In um, Matt's face. He, he old Buckness is 30 for 30, the punch. I the be, punch. But, like, there are so many iconic punches in the history of sport. And not like not just, like, a sport like boxing where punching is supposed to be involved. But right, right. you need to get more specific. I don't know if the punch, like, if this incident from Draymond and Jordan Poole is deserving of that lone title of the yeah. punch. Yeah. Uh, but it looks like not only the Warriors, but the league is ready to put this behind him. The uh, the report the full report from Mark Stein earlier today also included uh, this. All signs continue to point to the NBA leaving all Draymond Green discipline to the Warriors, who mm. elected to fine but not suspend Green. Mm. So it looks like the league is saying, Warriors, you handle this. Right. Some people were wondering, will the league get involved? Will the league hand down right. any, any sort of punishment in addition to the Warriors? Looks like the answer is no. They're letting the Warriors handle it internally, and the Warriors said, take a few days away from the team. Yeah. Here's a suspension, but as of tomorrow, welcome back. Everything's fine. Yeah. Interesting. It's going to be an interesting practice. I, that's all I know. It's just me, and I'm talking about it from a sense of uh, after it's over, all, all the media that will be there and all the questions that will be asked. Uh, it's going to be a circus, yeah. and I'm just glad it's not going on here, and I'm glad it's way over there. They can deal with it there, man. Mm. Have fun with that. Enjoy that Enjoy drama. Enjoy that. <laughs> um fascinating can't yeah. wait to see how this plays out and with the, whether or not the warriors are like a you know a cohesive gelling yeah. team does it bring the them gate. together right right for something like this because sometimes that happens right you know tragedy brings things together sometimes it completely rips them apart right or does it start to fracture and yeah. you know because he has to play well like draymond has got to he can't come out sputtering you know what i mean he's got mm -hmm. to come out playing well man because, again, this would be lingering in people's minds. This would be talked about all season long during right. when they're on those national on, games. On top of the fact that Draymond's about to start yes. a contract year. Yes, yes. And it's already being rumored out that he wants to be a Laker. I heard Stephen A. saying things like, like he wants to be a Laker. He wants to be out of there doing that. So that stuff is already beginning. You know what I mean? And, yeah, it's just going to be an interesting season for Golden State. And it's funny because – I feel like I've been through this, you know yeah. what I mean? Like with the Bulls when they were winning championships and dealing with Scotty and his contract. And like you said, dealing with Mike uh, getting into fights with Steve Kerr, man, and dealing with Dennis disappearing for 48 hours. Like I feel like we've been through this kind of stuff, but it just made for a better story because the Bulls won. Yeah. So when you don't win, it, it magnifies it a little bit in a negative way. But when you do win, it just becomes part of your testimony because like, yeah, well, we got a championship out of it and that's mm -hmm. great. And that's awesome. So yeah, looking forward to the season, man. Just another reason to look forward to the awesome NBA season. Honestly. Right. Uh, as Michael in the comments said, winning cures yeah, all. Cures it right. all, man. It really does. That's bro. why the, the three alphas fight was a big deal. Cause that, that team was not winning and they <laughs> were all bitching at each other. Malice at the practice is pretty hey. good. <laughs> not bad. Oh, Buckness. Not bad. Uh, all right. So, we will move on in just a minute and get into our best elements of the Bulls preseason. We're going to count them down. Um, but first, today's episode brought to you guys by PointsBet. This football season, PointsBet's bringing you a better way to bet live on games. Which means while you're watching the Bears on Thursday Night Football tomorrow night, yeah. you can place a live same-game parlay, bet on the next drive to be a touchdown, yep. and cash out on your live second-half over bet. All that? All within the span of one game. One time. With PointsBet, you have access to more live football markets than ever before. Ever. Build the perfect live same game parlay by combining your favorite bets anytime during the game including spreads totals player props and more choose the outcome of the next drive and next points with points bet lightning bets oh. so whether you're on the move or on the couch do it live on points bet yeah. download the points bet app today and use that promo code chgo when you sign up to get those two risk-free bets up to two 
thousand dollars. So many dollars. So many dollars. So many dollars. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call one eight hundred Gambler for crisis counseling and referral services. Just a little bit of a teaser for what I know will be part of my Bears same game parlay okay. tomorrow night. Ready? Give me the over on Justin Fields rushing yards. Mm. I haven't even looked to see what it is. But assuming it's nothing crazy, like in the 40s, if it's something, you know, even like 30 or right, so, right. give me the over. You he over? was scrambling like a beast on Sunday, and oh, I loved it. Man, that touchdown he took away, man. Oh, oh my gosh, man. Oh, it's special. Highway robbery. It's special, man. We need tickets to go see him. And the only place you can get some tickets to go see him for the lowest price is what time is it? Game time. Who? Mm, it's the hottest new ticketing site. No, Joey. It's the hottest new ticketing <laughs> site that makes it easier than ever to score. The best deals are tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. Have you ever dreamed of sitting in the seat you thought you never could? A 50-yard line. Of the course. Courtside. Behind home plate. Floor seats at the concert. It's possible with game time. The biggest last-minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy. You won't find a better deal this season on Chicago Bulls tickets, y'all. And the season's right around that corner. Created by the fans, for the fans. This is what game time is. And it guarantees the lowest price. So, if you love what we do here at CHGO, then you will love game time. The best way to support us is to, one, hit that like button on our show. And then... Buy your tickets through the link in that description. Join the 15 million people who have downloaded the Game Time app and score the best seats to all your favorite events. Because, Joey, what time is it? Game time. Who? Mm. Mm. A little better. That's better. Good job, sir. <laughs> Call recovery. That's why I went back to him. You know what I mean? See, you went back to him. See, right? No, no, no. Right? You got to, I got to throw it I'm, to you. you know, and no, then I'll get it to you. You can't, you you can't, can't, come in with you can't shoot when it's not. It's we're really we're rhythmic offense here. Yes, we're, oh yes. Big Davis, the point offense. your point guardsman chip. Yeah, man. When the, when the ball is passed, man, you know everybody can't shoot. You know what I mean? When he hit that, don't worry. I got the assist coming for you if you want it. I'm always ready to pass, man. It's how I roll. Joey came back so strong with that after you were just completely dismissive oh, of man. him. The, no, Joey. No, because you already took the shot. Right. You already shot the hit. All you went in. Joey tried to come tip dunk it. It's not my that. shot. Not your shot, man. But I gave him his own, and he said, "Cash money." Mm. On point, man. And it looked good. Look good, Joey. Form look right. All right. Um, here we go. Let's talk about the 10 best things we saw in these four Bulls preseason games. We're going to go back and forth. Pick one, pick one, pick one, pick one. We'll each end up picking five because yes. we're not allowed to pick the same thing. No. Uh, so, Dave, because I'm such a nice guy. Yes, you are. I will let you pick the very first thing that you liked the best oh. about these Bulls preseason games. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. The very best thing that I liked about this is Nikola Vucevic. He is the man. <laughs> he was amazing and awesome. If it was anybody that stood out in that preseason, it was Nikola Vucevic, man. We mm -hmm. already knew, Matt, we already knew his skill. All mm -hmm. right. He, he wasn't proving nothing to us. Right. We already knew he was talented in his skill. It's so everybody else out there with, I don't know about the guy for can't shoot, can't do anything. I don't know the defense and things like that. Usually, like I said on the show yesterday, I don't put that kind of stock in preseason. Right. I don't. But he's a veteran. You know what I mean? Usually don't see veterans changing their game this late in the game. Yeah. You saw him kind of put a little more on his. You know what I right. mean? Especially on the defensive end when he was just more active with his hands, making it harder for the entry pass and for those guys to get those passes on the inside. Right. And then when they get it, using his size, using his body, and blocking shots on top of that as well. But the first game, I believe he had four blocks, if I'm not mistaken, that first game. Right. He was awesome. I don't even have to mention the points and the rebounds. That's what he do. My goodness. I don't even have to mention the three-point shooting because oh that's what he do, y'all. Silky. It's what he do, man, all right? So now it's just about the consistency Put it get together in the regular season, which I think he will. But this just let me know, like, yeah, it meant something to him last year that he didn't have the year that he wanted to have. Right. So he stayed behind, didn't go home, got a little better, did his thing. He was the man. I like that. That probably would have been my number one overall pick as well if mm -hmm. I picked first. Big and Dave's uh, Bulls fan voice. Yeah. It sounds strikingly similar to the Rednecks in South Park. <laughs> he took his job. Yeah. I've never watched that either, and that's the second time I've heard that from somebody. I think I saw it in the comments once, and I was okay, like, that's all right, I'm about to say, I've strikingly heard this accurate. And I was like, I got to go hear this then. Yeah. I mean, it's it sounds like that just without, like, the southern twang. Okay. Right, it sounds right. Very but similar. it's very, like, just 
base gibberish. Okay, right. base gibberish. Okay. Um, in the comments, Carlos pointing out that Vooch looks leaner and in better shape too. Yeah, Mark I think pointed they were that mentioning out. Mentioning that, Mark pointed that out. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Mark talked about that in post game last night. Yeah. I didn't really think about it until someone else mentioned it. And Me I, neither. And I was like, yeah. he does look a little, a little trimmer. He does. Like in better shape. Like he said, uh, in his face, he he looked yeah. a little trimmer and slimmer down there. So, which might have something to do with the fact that it looks like he's moving better. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I mean, you mentioned some of the amazing underrated still underappreciated still playmaking that Vooch is capable of we talked about it when we were breaking down our Vooch tape oh, and doing our Vooch prove it episode at some point it. you know in, in the last couple of weeks that one pass he had last night against the Bucks mm. you know the one the full court pass yeah I remember. where he was just like oh QB1 P Will's breaking out and yeah. you know kudos to Pat for saying you know I got I got a run out opportunity here and getting down the floor but the pinpoint accuracy of that pass from your center, yes. from under your own basket, no one else in the league, big man, other than the other Nicola, Correct. is doing that. Correct. Um, and did you see the Bulls uh, tweeted from the Bulls Twitter account that and called him like Nicola Ball, yes. as in like Lonzo Ball, because we've seen Lonzo make those passes. Mm -hmm. And he quote tweeted it and was like, no, call me Nicola Mahomes. Boom. I loved it. <laughs> Absolutely loved I it. I love it. I was cracking up when I saw that, man. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it was perfect. And it was a pass to Patrick Williams. It was right on point, man. Yeah, he's your center. This is not normal stuff, y'all. And the fact that he's on our team doing this, man, just be excited about it. I am. I'm very excited about it, and I'm happy he did what he did. So, yeah, let's Absolutely. get to the season and see more of it. Absolutely. Uh, Colin saying, what are the odds Vooch makes the all-star team? And I don't want to hear any slowdown. It's only preseason. Vooch is going to roll. I, I mean, maybe easier for a center having a monster season to make the all-star team than, like, you know, guards. Yeah. Guards, it's hard. Yeah, true. These days, and that doesn't matter, East or West, there's so much talent at that position. True. It's damn near impossible to make the all-star team as a guard. It's true. Maybe Vooch. But then you look at the East, you're like, oh, wait, okay, Embiid. Giannis. Yeah. yeah. Jared Allen was an all-star last yep. year. He was an all-star. This is true. It's, uh, yeah, it'll be tough. It'll be tough. It's tough, but he can do it, though. What are the odds? Mark K, Mark K says zero. Zero. Zero oh, chance of being an all-star. Ever the right. realist. Hey. <laughs> Gotta love it. And, and that's coming from Mark K, a Vooch defender. Yes. Um, <laughs> Bam. Oh, oh! I thought you were like oh, bam like, out of bio. Bam out yes, of bio. Yes, At first, yes. I thought you were just saying zero, and then following up your zero with a bam. Like I'm right. No, bam. That, that's what you do, man. No. That's yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's my thing. That's your thing. Bam. Boom in your face, <laughs> <laughs> you idiots! Pow right in the kisser. Pow 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 pow. <laughs> um, okay, moving along. My next or my first pick. My favorite things about preseason. I'm sure we'll get to all the role players who we saw great things from in the preseason, but my number one is obvious. Don't think too hard. Watching DeMar dominate mid-range. Yes. I missed watching DeMar's footwork on a basketball court this offseason like mm. a fat kid misses cake. Mm. Oh, my God. I did not realize Pulled how much <laughs> I missed watching DeMar hoop until I got another taste of it, a mm. refresher course. Anyone wondering about, ooh, you know, DeMar, another year older, another season older. I, did you watch him? Mm -hmm. Like, he had limited minutes in the preseason, and we are all more than fine with that. Yes. The man has nothing to prove. Zero. But holy shnikes. Yes. That man's mid-range game and footwork, dominant as ever, and I love it. Yeah. Again, for the millionth time, I'm telling you all that Matt and I share a brain. Because this was literally my second thing. Hey. <laughs> was, and it was DeMar DeRozan is not old. It's <laughs> exactly what I said. He's Man, dude, like from the first game, Matt, it was just like, oh, this is going to be a continuation <laughs> of what we saw? Oh, it's not. we're not going to stop the movie? We're just going to go right to the sequel? Keep going, keep going. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's keep going into it, man. And it was great because, and it was quiet, which was why, because we weren't paying attention to him. Right. That's why it was quiet. At the end of every preseason night, we'd be like, tomorrow at 22? <laughs> right. Like, what? what? How? When did that happen? <laughs> you went to the line 12 times? Really? Like, oh, man. Because we weren't paying attention to him. You know, we were focusing, we were looking at Pat, you know what I'm saying? We are looking at other guys, uh, seeing what they could do. Right. We weren't really watching DeMar doing stuff. We were just like, oh, yeah, yeah, DeMar, yeah. And I mean, man, it was just great that he's still there. And like uh, Will said, he's been hooping <laughs> all year long, man. The dude, they really took a day off from hooping. I'm glad mm. they gave him the day off yesterday, for goodness sakes. 
he loves to play basketball, man, and he is very comfortable. And the fact that he's still, as the kids would say, in his bag mm. right now, man, the fact he's still doing his thing like this, I'm just happy he's a Bull. I've, I say it a million times, bro. I'm just so happy he plays for the Chicago Bulls, man. It's, awesome. it's really incredible. It really um, is, man. Colin in the comments said, DeMar, a damn Picasso around the paint. Yeah, not just the dominant mid-range, which obviously we learned still there, Yeah, but some of those moves with his footwork around the rim, that one step-through move he had yeah. on oh. uh, on Aaron Gordon, oh. that poor bastard. Poor guy. Oh, my God. Poor guy. Just absolutely filthy. Yeah. The DeMar... You know what I want to do right now? I want to shoot some free throws. Right. So I'm going to draw a foul. Yeah. He not? just decides to and then does. Right. And that is, you know, we're, we're excited about the the randomness of this offense and the sure. transition offense and all that stuff that DeMar doesn't really do. Right. But having that DeMar DeRozan option out there whenever he is out there to say, need a bucket. Yeah. Like you were saying in their first preseason game that was going less well, and it was like, you know, they they were, you know, suffering like an 0, and, 0 to 8 run against the Pelicans. And you just like, you got a beautiful DeMar bucket and you're like, oh, it's like a Band-Aid, right? Yeah, you're like, salve, oh, yes. It's a sal- healing salve. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and yes, Ricky, I did quote some fitty for you right there. Yes, he there. did, man. He said, I'm putting on open toes sandals tomorrow. Do it. <laughs> Season ain't over. I got till Wednesday, baby. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. All right. So, Dave, what's next for you? So, for number two, then, if it's not going to be that, it's going to be this. Io deserves to be the starting point guard. He deserved it. Earned. Earned it. Officially earned it. the starting point guard job. You, that, say, you can say it deserved. You can say earned. Have, whatever you feel to say it. But that's what it is. Um, from game one. Mm-hmm. It just felt like, yeah. And it's funny because I don't think it was even another thought after the first game. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even think it was another thought about this is what he is going to be. Because not only did I think he was going to be that, but he went in there and, like you said, he earned it. He proved it. And he showed, like, yo, I deserve this. This is supposed to be for me. And just watching his shot, we've seen is improved. He's changed the mechanics of it. And it's much smoother and there's a faster release on his shot. Uh, watching him running the uh, offense also, I enjoyed, which is why my prove it was for him to get four and a half assists. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see that because I looked like he looked like he could definitely do that. And then uh, watching him take the ball and take command himself by saying, "No, I'm going to score." You know, I, I love when guys know that the ball is theirs. I control this. I do what I feel because I'm the point. I can run this. No, I'm gonna go get my points right here. I can get to the basket and get these buckets. I like the way he was drawing fouls as well. Mm-hmm. I don't think that was talked about enough. Like he was doing a solid job uh, of drawing fouls, and then him being able to play in multiple kinds of lineups. Right, is very, very, very key and important. Putting him on the floor with Caruso, putting him on the floor with Dalen Terry, running the pick and roll with Vooch or Drummond. Like he can do both of those things. So he's going to be very versatile and very important. And I'm sure he'll play a lot of minutes. They're going to use that that Creed body that he does put together. So, yeah, man, I just I was really proud of him, though, man. He, and the, the clincher, the clincher, Matt, was last game when he was the final name announced and you just heard from Chicago. I, I was like, yeah, he's the starter, bro. Like, just just do this. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, Teresa in the comments saying, I definitely earned that point guard spot. He deserves it. Mm-hmm. Carlos asking, can I be a borderline all-star in the next few seasons? It's twice we've heard people talking about? all-stars out here. I like it. Wow. 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 Um, wow. 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 I <laughs> See, I, I hear that question, and I tell you, pump the brakes. Mm-hmm. Don't put too much ridiculous hype expectation on Io. Mm-hmm. I completely agree, and I, coming into training camp, was a little bit lean in Caruso, if you recall. I remember. And you and you're like I was gonna come out here and he's gonna earn this starting point guard spot and he did mm-hmm. and I am thrilled about it. Yeah, let's not ruin this good, fun, happy, awesome thing mm-hmm. of Chicago's native son, your starting point guard for your Chicago Bulls by heaping unrealistic expectations on him. Yeah. Now I know you know Carlos asked in the next few seasons, so I know that your question wasn't, "Are we about to see Io be an All Star this year?" Because obviously that answer is like, "No." Are you freaking kidding me? The odds of that are infinitesimally small. Ooh. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> the bars? Did you hear this? You ain't even catch that, did you, Joey? Yeah, I didn't. What was it? Unantithically small? <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> Infinitesimally. Infinitesimally small. 
Not even going to pretend like I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't think that one was going to garner that kind of reaction. What? Are you kidding? I do this every – wordsmith, man. You drop them words like that, man. It's like, woo. Big toe shoot up in the shoe, baby. I mean, I, I drop words like Io drops dimes. Come on now. Hey. Listen to this man. Hey. Who told him he's quoting 50? Now he's just going crazy <laughs> now. Now he's just out here losing his mind. Yeah, because it's because you made me watch that YouTube video of that guy. Uh, Anderson uh, Pack, baby. There, there you go. It means he was amazing. I got a little Anderson Pack in my system today. Nothing wrong with that. Yes, loud. Sure. <laughs> He doesn't know what that means yet. But I know. Yes, I, I'm with you. I'm with I don't. You, and I'm I watched the song, and I was like, okay, the, for the first three minutes, I was like, yeah, okay, this is good. And well, then the final minute of the song, he just like starts drumming like crazy. We got to like, show him the uh, NPR. awesome like punk rock riff. I'm on it. The and I was like, why? Why didn't he just make the whole song this awesome punk rock drum solo? Yeah, I, I'm giving him three performances. Okay, the, the first one I showed him was when he was on Colbert. That was his first okay. ever live national. You know the NPR Tiny Desk. Of course, costume. that's that, like. That's the third. That is so cool. That's the third one I'm showing him. Great. That's the that's number three Save on the it. list. Save yeah, it. For I've them. heard of that. The little tiny, tiny desk. NPR yes. tiny desk. I'm you would you would like that. Matt. Right. You would like that. You would mm-hmm. like that. I think you would. If I had a Starburst, I'd give you a treat right now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm proud of you. Um, that was the the first time I heard that uh, guy who was really popular and then passed away a few years ago. Mac Mill. Mac Miller. Yeah. Yes. That was the first time I heard of yeah, uh, the, the tiny desk Miller, is when man. he did it. Yeah, I love. And Mac I was Miller. like, "What's a tiny desk? And who the hell is this guy?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out Mac. Miller, um, Rest in peace to him. Yeah, but obviously, watching Iowa earn that starting point guard spot was for sure a highlight of the preseason. Yeah. All it right. Was. Uh, I'm up next, and my second favorite thing, I gotta go with. Holy cow, Caruso's defense. Ooh. I mean, we all knew it was there last season. We saw it last season. Holy cow. But the Bulls, and, and you know, who knows, one of us might end up selecting the Bulls' transition and fast break offense is mm-hmm. one of our favorite things. But in order to get that, you first need the point of attack defense to get those steals. Mm-hmm. And Caruso is diving around like a madman out there in yeah. preseason games yeah. caruso was diving around like a lunatic he was. um th- he is going to be so vitally yeah. important to what the bulls do and how much success they have especially in the first half mm-hmm. first two thirds mm-hmm. of this season without his defensive partner in crime lonzo ball out there but if alex caruso's presence can heighten the defense of some of these other guards Mm -hmm. like we have seen in certain glimpses of the preseason, whether it be Kobe coming up with a steal or Io or whoever else or Dalen if he's getting run, even Zach and DeMar getting involved defensively on occasion. Mm -hmm. Caruso is the engine of all of that. And watching him play 24 seconds of defense like his life depends on it, Mm -hmm. your roster needs at least a couple of those guys. Certainly at the bare minimum needs one. Caruso is that guy for this team, and I freaking love him. Without question, Matt. I mean, the spark plug as soon as he walks in, and I don't mean just because he's rah-rah kind of spark plug. No, bringing competency on the defensive end immediately and bringing you offense with the slashing and the cutting that he does. And not only that, he can also set those picks. I mean, he ran a pick and roll with freaking Nikola Vucevic, man, with Nikola actually being the one doing with the ball yeah, and doing the rolling and getting to the bucket for the lay-in. That was off a Caruso pick. Um, the play he had after the drum and block, oh. and he and he ran that with Drogic, and they ran their two man game, you know, with the behind the back mm-hmm. for the lay in. Those kind of things, those are the stuff I talked about with Lonzo. Those stolen points, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like he he was Lonzo was great at at stealing points for for the Bulls, and I enjoyed watching Caruso do that by just getting in passing lanes and getting on their nerves, stealing that ball, tipping it in the air, making he he creates fifty fifty balls. You know what I mean? By by just getting in there and tipping it, up oh, it's up for grabs now. Who wants mm-hmm. it? Who's gonna come get it? Caruso does a great job at creating the 50-50 balls. So yeah, man, like he's gonna be vitally important. As Will always tells, it's not about who's starting with him, it's about who's closing. And we know that Caruso is gonna be one of those guys who's closing because of that defense he could provide. Uh I wanna see if it comes over in the three point shooting as well. I want that to improve, because then it'll be just extra lethal what he's doing out there. And of course, you want him to be healthy. You want this man to stay healthy. You need every bit of what he has this season for the Chicago Bulls, man. So, yeah, but, no, you're right, man. It was, he was fun to watch in the preseason. We wanted him out the game in, in, in the last one. I'm like, why is he still he in the game? He was playing an awful Taking lot of charges. second half minutes last night. Taking charges and in the third like, quarter. Uh, why? Uh, Billy? Like, uh, sit him down, me? man. Um, nah, he should be down now. Yeah, we should put, him, put that man in the bubble wrap. Let's go. Uh <laughs> 
Uh, Don, Don Tavies in the comments saying, I said it last year, if Caruso and Ball were healthy, they both would have been all defensive teamers. I, I agree. I think there's absolutely yeah. a good chance that that happens. Because in the offseason, when every NBA metric account starts posting all of their various rankings from last season, yeah. any and all advanced defensive metrics rankings had either or both of Lonzo and Caruso in them. Yes. Like yes. top ten. Yeah, they did. They did. And, mm. and I mean, just goodness gracious, those plays – it was just clamp everybody. Two people clamping everybody on the floor. Just disruptive in those passing lanes. So the fact that I can get Caruso and Io doing that is going to be awesome. You know, being that kind of, those kind of disruptors. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking second unit when I'm saying that. Mm -hmm. Like those kind of disruptors for the, for the second unit where guys probably won't have as many primary ball handlers out there with their second unit. Well, guess what? It's about to be run city. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Death by a thousand cuts defense is back, baby. I can't wait to see it. Yes, sir. Shout out, Caruso. All right. We will continue with our favorite things from Bulls preseason in just a minute. But first, Big Dave, we've got a new sponsor. New sponsor alert. Tell the people who it is. <laughs> new sponsor alert, baby. Shady Ray. Ooh. Oh, come on down, Shady Rays. Did you say Shady Rays? Uh, <laughs> 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 Dude, I want to watch CSI Miami so bad yes, right now. Yes, man. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Shady Rays and us, we never understood why sunglasses are so damn expensive. All right? So guess what they did? They said, we're going to change all that. You don't have to break the bank, y'all, for quality sunglasses this fall because our friends, our friends, yeah. uh, our peoples yeah. at Shady Rays have you covered. Their premium polarized shades featuring world-class optical clarity, substantial durability, and styles cater to everyone for every lifestyle. Hey. The best, <laughs> the best <laughs> part about Shady Rays, you want to know? They have the most insane protection program in all of eyewear. Uh, that's a phrase you probably never heard in your life, but they got it. Lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your shades on day one, they told us that they will send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. Do you hear what I just said to you? Zero questions. Drop them off at the lake, off a cliff, left them at that girl house you weren't supposed to be over. I've done all those things. Mm, 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 mm. They'll replace it immediately. They own it, all right? Even with their strong protection program, they still manage to make quality that you and I can just tell by holding them in your hand. It seems just as good as any expensive pair that you probably will ever put on, man. They're going to save you money, and you're going to look good doing it. Two things that you want to do in life. Look good and save us some money. Shady Rays. Customers seem to agree over 200,000 five-star reviews, y'all. Come on now. So many. They stand behind their product, y'all, and you should too. And this is exclusive for our listeners right here. This exclusive is just for y'all checking this out. Shady Rays is running their deepest deal of the season. Use that code, y'all. C-H-G-O. 50% off two or more pairs 50%? at ShadyRays.com. Like half off? Like 50. 50%. Buy get one, your savings. Buy up. one, get one, baby. That's all it is. Buy one, get one, Shady Rays. You can get two of them pairs with low as 54, y'all. You can get it on down. Get it on down. Redeem only at ShadyRays.com where you will find all of their newest and best shades. Because somebody said Shady Rays. Shady Rays. Shady Rays. Shady Rays. Shady Rays. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Shady Rays, baby. Get you down with it. I can't Man. wait to put them on. I love that. Yeah, isn't it amazing? It blew your mind, didn't it? Yeah, I am so excited Look at my pair. <laughs> so excited. Mine is You know blown. me. I'm a cheap sunglasses guy. This is true. They and look nice, though. Yours look good. Well, yeah, but, you know. That, They're not going to be Shady Rays, but. And zero dollars. Matt, but now I'm gonna have what, a really do you think nice of, of what do you think, Matt, of sunglasses that look like this in this style? Is um, there something that angers you? I'm not the villain in an 80s ski comedy, <laughs> so I would not wear those. <laughs> 
Welcome, Mr. Bond. When we talked yesterday about how during random things in life, and I think, what would Peck think of this? That was a perfect example. That was example. one of them? Like, that was. These that was like big, them, yeah. obnoxious glasses. I'm like, I want to get one of these for Matt. Give it to him. Actually, Joey, I think you could pull those off, to be honest. I have friends that have worn those. There's okay. A, you seem yeah. like you could pull those off playing some Frisbee golf or something, man. You could rock them, bro. Well, me and Matt have talked about our Frisbee golf. Yeah. Fr- ultimate Frisbee passion. I can but see I don't this. think those are very Frisbee glasses. No, but they do not look so? Frisbee oh, okay. golf. Right. Not going not gonna to hold the show back anymore. <laughs> no Frisbee? golf show oh no uh all right dave you're up what, all right what your next thing on your favorite preseason list this was probably i shouldn't say shocking but surprising thing for me but andre drummond is a bucket oh dude <laughs> that was on my list too he's a bucket like and that's with the question mark when you put that he's up. A there, bucket, he's, he's a bucket unless he's trying to make a layup. Unless he's, he's a dunk a bucket <laughs> and he's a three ball bucket. You know what I mean? Like I, I was surprised. You hear me? Like yeah. just watching him do those things. And it was just one he I know how good he is out the pick and roll. I get that. So that's how that's how he rolls, you know, with the pick and roll, the dunks he was getting. But it was the moves when he was pump faking on the baseline and, and taking the baseline and hitting him with the layup. It was stuff like that. And, of course, it was the three-point shooting that we saw where he went on a barrage in one game, mm. just all three. And all three, it was like, no, 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 no. Oh. No, 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 no. Whoa. <laughs> no. What? Because <laughs> they were all, you know what I'm saying? There was no rattling in, no lucky off the backboard. No, he looked like, no, this is what I meant to do. Yeah. Excuse me. And that's what was so impressive about it. And the other thing, made both his free throws, like, this dude is a career terrible free throw shooter. Career for his career. True. He is not good at shooting free throws. Like under 50%. Yes. And and just watching him shoot them again, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. It was surprising to me. When we got Drummond, I remember when we got I said it then. I wasn't a fan. I was Because I remember Drummond in Detroit. That's all I'm thinking about is him in Detroit. I was like, it's going to be some bonehead stuff. He's going to do something. And it's going to be crazy. And then the first thing I see he does here, he gets thrown out of a game <laughs> for standing on the sideline. And I was like, oh, here we go. What, here we go. What was the, what's the phrase that they're using? Bench decorum? Bench decorum. It's like, what are we, at a boarding school? <laughs> oh, a very poor bench decorum, Mr. Drummond. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I'll have to assess you. Your second technical. Oh. Enjoy watching the remainder of tonight's <laughs> game from the locker room. <laughs> Yes, in that voice. That's how I felt. <laughs> that's how every NBA ref sounds. That's, that's how head. every. Yeah, exactly right. No, it's Joey Crawford. It, dead on. So <laughs> it was surprising just to watch him be like that, and to just watch him be that kind of guy. Who I'm like, I can depend on you offensively, right, to do these things. And then the block shot he had on the defense just let me know the awareness is there as well. Like, cause I'm always looking for those kind of things. You know, man, I love IQ. Right. So I'm looking, always looking for those kind of things. And just seeing him do that and not I, – I can't really complain about him being out of position on certain things because there weren't many <laughs> that right. I to complain about. I'm like, no, he he looks solid. Like, yeah, this looked like a really good backup center option. And, of course, the most important thing that he does is I don't have to watch Tony Bradley anymore. Thank you, Andre Drummond. <laughs> Poor Tony. <laughs> just – out here catching strays. Hey man, um, I'm glad he's on the team, but, but I'm glad. I'm just glad I don't wrong. have to watch. We, it. When he got blocked three straight times last night, we laughed so hard. We can laugh. See, I can so laugh now. Hard. I can laugh. Um, no. I love that. That's a great. That's a great pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, people were kind of eh about the Drummond signing when it happened earlier this summer. I think he's shown in these preseason games that he can, without a doubt help this team a lot more than Bradley or Tristan did last season. Yeah. Like, yeah. unquestionably. And if that even actually includes not just a joke, but if he's left open, he can knock down a couple of threes. Yeah. Good, because this team needs that. They do. That The amount of people making that joke when Drummond was just raining those threes. Oh, it looks like the Bulls did address their lack of three-point shooting. We just didn't know it was Drummond. Fantastic. All right, moving on. My next pick for favorite preseason items. Yes. If this were like a draft, I feel like I would be getting incredible value here with this being my third thing. Five Javantes. My God, five Javantes. And in parentheses, that one dunk in particular. (laughs) The man almost dunked from the free throw line 
in live game action. Yeah. That's something that only a handful of people have done in a dunk contest setting in the history of basketball. Oh, he's right. And Javante was one shoe inside the free throw line and did it in a game. It was amazing. What? This man is not human. He's not. He's made of something else entirely. Steel it's like and flubber brawn. or something. Steel and brawn. <laughs> he made the wheel. <laughs> Built the Eiffel Tower out of metal. <laughs> Ron <laughs> and Javante. And Javante. You got to have Javante to build a building. It's necessary. Um, it was yeah. amazing. He, he rocks. It was amazing. I love Javante. It, it just always trips you out that he's 6'5", you know? Yeah. And playing power forward. I or Colin in the comments says 6'4". 6'4". Yeah. one, I'm still <laughs> bugged out like that he's that. And playing power forward and doing it well. Like you don't, you're like, yeah, we can live him in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this works. And he gives us something, and we've seen it. He's seen something in the starting lineup. And, again, it's probably that continuity oh. that he had with the team last year because he started a lot of games at that position uh, because Patrick Williams was hurt. But you didn't lose too much with him out there. The, the, the defense was still there. Uh, the athletic ability, obviously, is going to be there. The three-point shooting was there in the first half of the season, not the second half of the season. Um, and just him being active, completely active, because – the Bulls, like I said, man, they have a bunch of cool guys. You know, everybody's cool. DeMar's cool. Zach's cool. Vooch is cool. You know what I mean? Uh, Io's cool. Like, you got to need some fire with that ice. And he's that fire that in that in that lineup for them, man, that get the loose ball, I'm out. Running the break in transition, I'm gone. Now he can he hit some threes, too, also in the preseason, mm -hmm. showing that he's working on that shot as well. So if he's improving all of that, man, and we and remember you. We talked about it, how giddy you and I got. We saw him hitting threes, and we were like, "Oh, if he hits three, we win so many games." Yep. So yeah, if that occurs, then man, watch out, Bulls fans. It could be a fun, fun, fun season. Because if you recall, at the beginning of last season, Javante was like, "Oh, I'm stroking threes. Yeah. In addition to having five of me out out there defensively, and he did. He it did. Was a big factor in the Bulls winning more than they lost. Yes. Then Javante true. went ice cold, frigid. And that wasn't the only reason the Bulls started losing a lot more than they won. Yeah. But it was a contributing factor. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm just so excited that they got this. I know that Bulls fans still occasionally think back to that Boston trade to be like, well, you know, what was the real point of that? Because we only had Tice for a half a season, then we let him go in that sign and trade. And, you know, then we got the exception, the trade exception from that Tice thing that we didn't really end up using. And I, and I said it then, and I've said it several times before. I'll say it one more time now. Javante was the real reason they made that trade, y'all. Mm, Everyone thought it was yeah. Daniel Tice. Everyone thought that trade with Boston was about Daniel Tice. Yeah. No. It about was about Javante. stealing Javante mm. Green. And that's what they did. Theft. Pay that man. Theft. Stay here. Robin Never Hood. leave Javante. Never. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna stalk you. Oh, whoa. But like in like a but like in a, but like in a fun friendly way. Gotta let me out the car just now. To, man. Just, to, just, to, just to make sure you stick around. Yeah, that's this, all. This cool. Just pull over right there. Right <laughs> all right, Dave. What do you got next? <laughs> oh man. Okay. The next thing I got here. Kobe consistency. I like that. Consistently. A little alliteration. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. We saw some of it in very short order, mm -hmm. but we saw some of it from Kobe White. The first game he went out, you know, because he had the issue, you know, the little tweak. Right. The thigh. But when he came back, the shooting wasn't there in the first game. I believe, what, three of ten or something like that from the three-point line. Right. But he didn't shoot, but he didn't look lost on the floor. Mm -hmm. He still looked like he was supposed to be out there. Uh, he did it, and again – Know how many times I've told you and Will this dude's defense has gotten better. <laughs> it got better, all right? His defense is better. He's a better defender. I think he showed that also in those preseason games. But I'm just talking about the first one. But in the next game, you saw that comfort. You can tell he wasn't carrying anything mentally anymore. Once he missed a shot, it's over. Mm -hmm. Once he made a turnover, it was over. He went on to the next thing. And even when he started hitting those shots – he didn't stay with that either. Mm -hmm. He was on to the next one. He was like, yep, yep, yep. All right, I'm on to the next one. That's the Kobe White that I've been wanting to see. That, that's why I said his proof was just BMF and Kobe White because that's the Kobe White that I thought that he was, a dude that can get hot and consistently do it for you, 
but won't carry it into himself mentally. It's just out there because he knows what he's out there for to provide that offense for the Chicago Bulls and also a little bit of defense. Again, I'm not saying he's a lockdown defender. That's not what he is, okay? But he's a solid, he's okay at, at his defense. He got better than what it was. That's improvement, man. Right. But that consistency, Matt, in those three games, he was consistently uh, uh, dependable right. in those games. You're like, yep, yep, yep. And it was a wide array of scoring. Boy, that step back looking a little more vicious. It's looking a little more vicious. Ah. And you're going to need his three-point shooting this season. Because, again. Absolutely vital. It's incredibly vital. So, Kobe White to have that shooting. So, I was really proud of what I saw from him. Um, I like the fact we haven't heard a lot from him right. this offseason. He's just been working. Right. And flying under that radar, man. So, I thought he was consistent, though, in the preseason. I would love to see that consistency carry over into the regular season. Love it. Um, all right. We're running short on time, so we'll go through the, the remainder sure. uh, rapid fire or as close to it as we can. Sure. My next one, Dalen Terry checking into a basketball game yep. is like dropping a Mentos in a two liter of Coke. <laughs> <laughs> that man checks into a game and immediately yep. changes the chemistry of that game. All of it. It is incredible to watch. Yep. And we saw some of it. We saw a little glimmer of it in, in the summer league mm -hmm. games. But it was just like, eh, you know, it's summer league. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, preseason? Like, before the season, but kind of part of the season? Yes. I'm playing in a Bulls jersey we in. at the United Center? Yep. Let's freaking go. Oh. Look, we still don't know where, if at all, he's going to fit into Billy's original rotation. Yeah. Billy did say after their game last night or either before – that he might be willing to go full-on 10-man rotation, at least out of the gate this season. Yeah. Does that give Dalen a, a, a greater shot at actually earning real minutes out of the gate as we here? We will see. We'll see. But there is no way you can deny that in those four preseason games, even in the one where he only got in in garbage time at the end of the fourth, mm -hmm. he comes into a game and he changes the game. Immediately. I love that because that's what I had next to. It was Dalen Terry. Same brain. Same brain. But here's the other one I have for you, man. My final one. I'll go with this. Okay. Dragic will be useful. Oh, that was my <laughs> last one, too! <laughs> Dragic is going to be very useful for the Chicago Bulls. At that first game, we, we were not too hot on that. We were like, right. I don't know. The jer the way, even the way his jersey fit mm -hmm. in the first one, he just looked cold. Everything about him looked cold out there. But then, when it got that just for men, he came back in the jersey, was right, and he looked much more crispy clean out there with his shot, with his IQ, and with his awareness as a point guard when he was doing it out there, man. Guy, he, man, he was running circles around people out there, man, and it was like, whoa, who is that? It was like, <laughs> yo, who is this dude? Like, it was a complete 180 right. what we saw in the first game, man. And it was, yeah, it was just really good to see. It was really good to see. I love that. Uh, that was one of my last ones as well. So, okay, I'll pick this for my final thing that I liked about the preseason. Sure. We got to see for ourselves that Costas can't play basketball. Oh, man. So that we don't have to spend the next several weeks, months, whenever, if maybe the Bulls are in need of a player, Bulls fans coming out of the woodwork to say, well, why are they should be playing Costas on it Kupo? He's an on it Kupo. That dude <laughs> sucks at basketball. All right. Not, we not. all saw it with our own two eyes. We're done. And it was a good use of the preseason. Yeah. Good for the Bulls for bringing him in just to see. Yeah. Just to see. Just check out. There's a reason that he is not stuck yet anywhere in the NBA when some team has been like, hey, look at your last name. Come on in. <laughs> Never mind. There's the door. <laughs> what do you want me to write on the graphic? Um, Costa sucks? Nah, well, that, uh, because it says best moments of preseason. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Learning we don't need Costas. Learning. If you can fit that in learning there. Learning we don't need. Yeah. Yeah, everything, yeah. He wasn't the best. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't the best. Watching him out there. It would, every, he would come out there, the turnovers that would occur. Yeah. Immediately that would happen. It was like, you man, he still he still needs work. Yeah. Like, work, work, work. And you're right. He removed something. Because Bulls fans, and not just Bulls fans, just Chicago fans in general, love to root for the guy that they haven't seen. Right. And the guy who looks like they should be able to do, you know, something. And you're right. That would have happened. If something happened to Curry, they're like, bring him in. Get him in here. Let's, why not? Why not? We saw why not. <laughs> and we saw he needs a little more work, more polish on him, man. 
We'll, we'll see you in the G League, bro, and I and I want to see you improve. But yeah, yeah. not yet. Um, not yet. I could have easily in that last spot said, "Hey, Pat had a, a bunch of dunks and put up a bunch of points in his yeah. last preseason." He was on game. my list too. I chose not to. Yeah, Pat, show us more. He was on my I'm list not, as well. I'm not. I'm not going to praise you for one preseason game against some scrubs where you finally assert yourself. Mm. You don't deserve to be on this list. You don't. Mm. I believe in you, but you do not deserve to be anywhere on that list. Prove us. Mm. Prove to us that you belong. Mm. Um, that's it. And thank you, Carlos. That's really nice of you to say, man. I, I didn't see what he said. At the then. bottom right there, last last one right there, man. Uh, he, about he, he enjoyed our breakdowns and hey. the player footage, uh, we, things that we were saying, you know, learning. He was learning here. He was laughing we and learning. We laugh and learn. Yes. And uh, enjoy each other's bullshit. The great KRS one said, it's edutainment. Yay. There you go. <laughs> that's what we do right here. <laughs> Quick little mind blow right before we get out of here. <laughs> All right. Uh, we will be back same time, same place tomorrow, 5.30, Thursday, Chicago time. Yeah. We will be here. The GOAT will be back with us, <laughs> and we're going to be doing our Prove It training camp series. Yes. And we are looking at Sir Patrick, young Sir Patrick. Sir? We're going to look at some tape from some of the good stuff he did against the Bucks last night, and then we're going to set our goals for Pat this season. Be there. We will see you then. In the meantime, follow us on Twitter. Bulls underscore Peck. Bow, BWL Sports. We are CHGO underscore Bulls. Appreciate the love. Appreciate you guys listening. Hit that thumbs up button if you haven't yet on your way out. And we will talk to you guys tomorrow. Joey. From Joey and Big Dave. And our Cubs guy, Ryan, working hard over there. Ryan's here. Uh, stay tuned. We got Blackhawks coverage. Puck drop tonight. Puck. Season opener. Our Blackhawks guys are in Denver hanging out with the DNVR family. I'm a little bit jealous. I'm a lot jealous. <laughs> Tune in for Blackhawks coverage right. tonight. <laughs> See you tomorrow. See you, Red. Be good. <laughs>